Hello, I'm Sama. Any diagnosis of a disability is going to be painful to deal with. I'd like to talk about a few different topics on being freshly diagnosed. Uh, first things first. Uh, if you're still alive, the game ain't over. So overcome and adapt, keep a level head, and keep going. That's hopefully the only advice I'm going to give here. Uh, but it is, it's the most important thing that I can offer. It's early. Um, disclaimer, of course, I'm not a doctor. Check with yours. So, okay, back to the topic. Uh, so you're freshly diagnosed with Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. Uh, there are a few questions to ask. So, question number one, do I agree with the diagnosis? Uh, if I do, is it because the doctor is always right or because there is uh, sufficient empirical evidence and a doctor's confirmation, ideally a geneticist's confirmation? Or do I not agree? And is it because I'm not ready to hear it? Or is it because I think that uh, where the doctor says they see something, uh, maybe I don't agree? Uh, in, in that case, get a second opinion. To, you know, just, just go. Just go find somebody who knows what this is and will look at it with you. Um, do I understand what Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is and what it's going to mean for me? So do I understand it physically? Can I gauge where it hurts? Uh, how often and what are my pain levels? What do I do to alleviate those? Is what I'm doing effective? Is it a reasonable solution? Does it take me too long to get better? You know, do I think there might be a better way? So physically, uh, emotionally, how will I make sure that I'm strong enough to handle this and only take on a little bit at a time? Uh, socially, will my family and friends be supportive? If not, who will I enroll in this process to make sure that I'm successful? And also intellectually, so do I need to do some reading? Do I need to do some anatomy studies? Would it be helpful? It was for me. Um, do I need to, uh, I don't know, look up neurology? What, what, what language do I need to learn in order to be able to understand and interact with my doctors so that I can get the help I need? Do I understand what to do now that I have this syndrome? <laughs> That's a big one, right? Do I understand what to do? So you can have a list, but if you don't know what to do and how to do it, you're kind of up the creek. So the first thing to do when you get diagnosed is to get your heart checked, of course. There's an echocardiogram. You want to make sure that you don't have uh, mitral valve prolapse. Uh, or if you do, you want to make sure that you're aware of it so that you can adapt, so that you can keep going. Um, where can I find support? Dog sleeping. Where can I find support? Uh, physically. Go to a physical therapist or an occupational therapist who understands what EDS is and learn safer ways to do things. Um, so what I did was made a list of things that happen and sort of, hey, is this related? Is this not related? And what you're going to find is that um, even for things that aren't related to EDS, that physical therapist will probably know how to help you. Um, and also, if it's not related to EDS, uh, how do you make sure that it doesn't become something that's related so that what you're doing isn't affecting the fact that you have EDS? Uh, for example, uh, let's say every time I turn the doorknob, uh, I snap my thumb. Okay, so that's probably EDS related. Unless maybe you're turning the doorknob in a different direction or would changing the doorknob to a lever type doorknob be a great way to fix that? Absolutely. Um, you know, is it reasonable? And so you'll you'll sort of, everything's kind of in a in a range of what's acceptable and what's not. But that's a whole other topic. So that's physically. Uh, emotionally, you can always talk to a counselor. Ain't no shame in it. It's uh, confidential. But this is a major critical life change. So you don't want to take this on by yourself.
need somebody around. There are online support groups. You can contact me. Keep a journal. Uh, stick to friends who will support you. And if you don't have any, find some. Uh, but they need to be people who are strong enough in themselves to handle the fact that you're turning to them for support. Uh, and don't go to people who aren't going to help you. Because it's, it's not going to... It's not going to help you. Brilliant. Uh, intellectually. So again, an anatomy book, research. You can ask your librarian. Uh, librarians love to do research, and it's a real challenge. So the more you learn, the more they learn, and everybody wins there. Uh, professionally, you can go to your Department of Rehabilitative Services. Uh, every state has one, and they can help identify the things that you need to stay employed. They can do uh, workplace assessments, whether or not a wheelchair would be appropriate, adaptive technology. Uh, they can help you communicate with your employer. They can do all kinds of things. So those are people who are designed to, uh, those are agencies designed to make it so that you can stay a participating member in your community. Um, disability may be the best role for some of you and consider it but I would if you really want to stay employed and I I highly advise it um, oh advice oh gross um, whatever if you want to stay employed you can always check with those agencies um, number five do I understand how to communicate about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Organize everything. Organize all your medical paperwork, referrals, results, uh, tests, bills, your notes, research, uh, outcomes of your research. Keep to-do lists, date them, prioritize, and reprioritize. Excuse me. <sighs> uh, um, understand what a good doctor is like. You should feel more settled after a visit with a list of things to do now and a list of things to do later. Um, you should never feel like, well, that's what the doctor said, so... And, you know, roll up your sleeves and go through it. You need to agree with your doctor. If you don't, that's a red flag that something is off. Um, keep a rolling list of questions. So share all of, I shared all of my questions with all of my doctors, physical therapists, whatever. They don't have time for that whole conversation during a day. They get like 15, 20 minutes per patient. And uh, they'll almost always reply though. So update them on follow-up questions or any conflicts with other answers. Uh, no question is too big or too small because this is your life. And if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. How long will it take to get a hold of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Uh, it depends on a couple of sub-questions, like how aggressively do you want to get a hold of it? Are you willing to find alternative ways to participate in activities? Are you in touch with the creative and critical thinking part of you that solves problems? Who in your life can you openly rely on to help you get through it? Uh, you know, disability, the word, is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It means that it's not in your best interest to do it the way everyone else does it, right? It's about balance, not brute force. This is your life, so how you live it is up to you. But take the time to understand the consequences of not changing the way you think and the benefits of changing the way you think. Revisit your thoughts every so often because perspectives change over time and with experience. So if you think of green eggs and ham, you know, you can always go back and read that good old book. Um, so, for example, um, bowling with friends. If you can't lift a bowling ball, then lift a camera. Take pictures. Find new hobbies. There's lots of them out there. There is life after diagnosis. Be well.